traveling the world can be scary. For many, the fear of the unknown, combined with the anxiety caused by language barriers, is enough to never make them want to leave their homes. But what if I told you that once you've taken the first step and left the safety of your home behind, it does not get better. Moreover, there's a huge chance that during your travels comes a time when you have to trust your belongings or even your life into the hands of a total stranger. Friends, in this video, our journey takes us to the land of our ancestors, into a region of the world where human civilization began. We will learn the secrets of harmonious life from an ancient city that despite countless rulers and many religions, has stood in its place for thousands of years. And of course, we will also share with you our own struggles. You will see what happens when things really go wrong while traveling. We just lost our drone. And by sort of a lucky accident, you will meet some freaking unbelievable people that might make you reconsider your own travel plans to such parts of the world. But first, let's go back to the days when homework seemed like the biggest problem in the world, just so all of us would be on the same page about the region of the world where our adventure takes place. Mesopotamia. I'm pretty sure you've heard the uh, term before. For some, it just might be a name from history books. For others, maybe the phrase the cradle of human civilization comes to mind. But to simply translate it, Mesopotamia means the land between two rivers. And this one behind me, Euphrates, is one of them. From here, hundreds of kilometers that way, the river Tigris, the area in between is considered Mesopotamia. And now we're gonna drive deep into this ancient land and visit one very, very old and special city. No, we didn't get stuck. Let's go. From the history books, most of us probably know Mesopotamia as this extremely fertile place where thousands of years ago agriculture began. But even today, during our hours long drive, farms and farmland was pretty much the only thing we saw on both sides of the road. These are all pistachio fields. Pistachio nuts originate from this region and uh, yeah, they're still growing them here. And on the road itself, well, there of course were many donkeys what? Even more sheep and dogs that for some reason thought that our yellow van posed a huge threat on their herds. I'm glad I was in a van. Yet after about half day's ride and our first proper view of the city, locals have a saying that during the day it looks like a graveyard. Yet come nightfall it turns into a beautiful sparkling necklace. Yeah, I don't see the necklace either, but, well, let's go there. The ancient city of Mardin. Yeah, the place sure looked beautiful, but straight away a problem arised. And the problem is that this is the largest street in the city. About 3,000 years ago, when the city was built, they clearly didn't think too much about parking. Modern day problems. After 20 minutes of fruitlessly looking for a place to park, we suddenly had an idea. Maybe our Airbnb had a spot for us. We stopped, found our soon to be home, and of course not. I don't even know what we were hoping for. No joke, this was the street in front of our home. Our van is not gonna drive here. But instead of parking, we found a very warm welcome. Already the welcome was very interesting. It was a high school class here and uh, the owner of our accommodation is an art teacher here in the gallery. The Airbnb was located on a top floor and the building itself was centuries old. The atmosphere here was so positive that we almost forgot about their problem at hand. Yet after receiving the key, we decided that we had to handle our parking situation before we got to see what kind of room $20 a night got us in such a unique city. 
This time we went in with a plan. At only a quarter of an hour later, we found the place where we can leave Freya for two days. Secure, beautiful place. I'm actually very, very happy. It was so stressful. Yet even here, in a random parking place, we were welcomed like old <laughs> friends with tea and a hot oven to warm our bodies. They're so good vibes. I like it here. It makes me feel welcome. But little did we know that this was just the top of the iceberg when it came to meeting locals of this city. We made our way back through the steep streets of Mardin and quickly realized why most people here are in quite good shape. <sighs> we are clearly not built for this city. We're really, really out of shape. <laughs> Just really, really out of shape. <sighs> Endless stairs. As we opened the door for the first time, we were blown away. In Europe, if you're lucky, $20 can get you a bunk bed in an eight-person dorm. But here, our accommodation was huge and full of character. This house is hundreds of years old. And oh, just look at that. Kind of like a studio apartment from hundreds of years ago. It even had a shower. <laughs> and this is our toilet. And if you're now thinking that we were just a tiny bit too excited about the room, then you try living in a van for months. Every place with running water starts to feel like a mansion. Well, and the best part was of course the view over the city and the endless Mesopotamian plains below. We simply couldn't wait to start discovering the secrets of this place on the following day. It's a new day, it's a new dawn, it's a new life for us. And, and I'm feeling good. Your line was, and we're gonna see Mardi. And I'm feeling good. As we headed to the streets the next morning, it slowly started to become clear what makes Mardin such a unique location. This city is built on a steep mountainside, which in turn has created a web of hundreds of small streets. Out of those, only a few are accessible by cars, and it creates a whole different atmosphere. Without the threat of cars, children are free to run around the city, unsupervised, filling the streets with laughter and joy. And the more central areas are often filled with shops and cafes, selling local crafts and food. Slightly chewy, slightly creamy white part, and then covered and filled with pistachio nuts. I know it might sound like a cliché, but Mardin really is one of those places where simply walking is an experience by itself. The buildings, the way it's built, it's so different and interesting that you just don't get tired of it. Yet of course, building your city on a hillside is definitely not the reason enough to make it thrive for thousands of years. And to understand the success story of this place, we need to look more closely at the people that live here. Throughout history, Mardin has been an important trading post and people from many backgrounds have lived here side by side. Even today, 4B groups can easily be distinguished. Kurds, Arabs, Turks and Syriac Christians. And when we raised our eyes a bit higher from the street level, it's a church tower. We understood that not only different nations have to go to the mosque, but also different religions live here side by side. Ulu Jami, the Grand Mosque, it is big, it's beautiful, but I think like its most famous part, it's his minaret. Every photo about Martin has Ulu Jami's tower on it. And this here is uh, Kirkland Church, 1,600 years old. It just shows the harmony that is in those, those towns here. In many ways, this city has always been a melting pot of beliefs and cultures. And thanks to this, every child that grows up here knows how to accept others that might not look and think like themselves. Sure enough, 
After seeing few of the famous buildings of Mardin, we had a chance to experience this part of the culture on our own skin. While again aimlessly wandering on one of the smaller streets, suddenly two men asked us inside. We were hesitant. Going with strangers went against everything our moms had taught us as children. Yet still, we accepted. Oh, wow. I don't know how it happened, but it feels like we have the best view in the city. As we sat down, we realized that we had not been the only ones with doubt. The men told us that when passing us on the street, they felt something in their hearts and decided to trust this feeling instead of their suspicious brains. Thank you for sharing that. That is really beautiful. Mm -hmm. Surprisingly, the place we ended up in was a 850 years old hotel. As we discovered the many rooms, I found myself thinking about how much courage it actually takes to be kind. Think about it. When was the last time you invited strangers to your house? For me, at least, the answer is never. That was so unexpected. We were just walking in the street and then we are having this heart-to-heart -heart conversation about life and dreams and future and so heartwarming, so heartwarming. By second afternoon, we had slowly gotten used to Marden, its vibe and atmosphere. There is no doubt that both geographically and culturally, this place is truly unique. Yet without us knowing it, there was still one big lesson that this city wanted us to learn. And with every passing minute, it was getting closer. As we got back from our day of discovering, there was just one small thing I had to do. A tiny job I have performed hundreds of times before that makes those videos so much more enjoyable for you guys to watch. And so without really thinking anything of it, I let the drone take flight. Yet seconds into the flight, something happened. Never before have I lost all controls to the aircraft with no means of regaining them. There was just panic. We split up and searched the streets for what seemed like forever. We asked the locals, trying to understand if anyone had seen it. Yet luckily, the drone's camera kept recording the whole time. And now we can show you exactly what happened. And for the sake of the story, from now on, let's call the drone Matilda. The last thing Matilda saw before prematurely landing on a random roof was a couple taking pictures of themselves. It took less than a minute for Matilda to be picked up by some random dude. Quickly, he gives us a glimpse of the surroundings and then takes Matilda with him to some smaller streets. The dude seems determined. He totally ignores a passing kid. Then he corners Matilda. Wait, it wasn't a corner, but a back door to a cafe. He passes through the place, takes the stairs and boom, a reflection. For the first time, we can identify the people who have her. They walk into a room, but wait, this is not the pawn shop. It's a hotel reception, also known as the nearest place with a computer, which now brings us to this moment. <sighs> we just lost our drone for 20 minutes. We asked locals, we, we split up, we were looking everywhere. They found it. This drone costs two, three months salary for locals here. It was it was 20 year old kids. They were, and, and they just kept it. They took the SD card out. They took it to a hotel where there's computer. They were checking the SD card to find out where the drone started, who owns it. Yeah, I tried to offer money. I tried to take them out to eat somewhere. They didn't accept any kind of gratitude. It was, it was crazy. Oh my God. People of Martin, there's Un incredible. It, it seems like such a small thing, 
but our cameras is everything we have to show you what we're doing. We knew that we had to find a way to say thank you to the boys. After all, if this city had taught us something, it was to listen to our hearts. <laughs> and next morning, a plan started to fall in place. First step, a proper Turkish breakfast with an amazing view. Oh, it was delicious. Wait, I think I forgot to mention that this place was owned by one of the boys' fathers. And they both worked here. I'm pretty sure that from the drone, drone clips next to this water canister is where the drone landed. So as we had finished our meal, we decided to once more hit them with a proposal. Yet this time, we asked in front of the father, so it would be harder for them to decline. And it worked. They said yes, with one condition. They cannot drink alcohol. <laughs> so they can eat no alcohol. <laughs> no, but it was really, really tense. You wanted to thank somebody and you're like hoping that they will let you. <laughs> Throughout the day, we made preparations. And once the work day ended for the boys, our show began. Okay, one last thing to do here in Mardin. Let's go and do it. We got Ahmed. Ahmed. And Ahmed. <laughs> <laughs> and brothers? No. Friends, Arkadaşlar. Yeah, okay. Yes. Tamam, tamam. As the four of us walked through the evening streets, I finally understood what the saying meant. Mardin really sparkles at night. It's beautiful and looking from afar, almost like a necklace. We headed for the fanciest restaurant in town. You know, the kind of place where usually only rich tourists go. It's way fancier than we, we are used to. It was beautiful. We enjoyed the music. Our table was full of delicious local foods. But most importantly, we were here together. Four strangers that, in spite of not speaking the same language, can now forever call each other friends. And I guess this was also the biggest lesson this city taught us. Helping us see the flaws in our own culture and how for hundreds of years ambitious leaders of the world have kept themselves in power by making us focus on our differences. They have planted the seed of fear and mistrust deep in our hearts and it has gone so far that in most cultures even the word stranger is associated with something bad. It takes courage to trust, patience to understand. Yet in Mardin's example, we see that if we want to build a city, a country, or even our own relationship, we need to push the fear aside. Because only the things built on trust, acceptance and love can stand the test of time, lasting for thousands of years. Friends, thank you for watching. And if you also have Turkey in your travel bucket list, make sure to check the description of this video where you can follow the link to get yourself your own Turkish travel mm. guide designed to make your journey here as affordable and memorable as possible. Bye.